Let's talk the Big 12 and what problems they have with Baylor. Which, by the way, if you're looking to keep up to date with this crazy, wacky conference and see all the different scenarios of who can get to this championship game, might I recommend Locked on Big 12 with our old friend Drake Toll. It is one of the biggest college football podcasts out there now. Drake does a great job um, with covering this conference, so can't recommend that enough, as well as Locked on College Football with my pal Spencer McLaughlin. Um, he, lo- he loves a bit of Big 12 chaos as well. So I would check those out to keep kind of keep up with everything that's going on here in our great truck stop conference. I have a little bit of an issue with the Big 12 right now. I'm beginning to think that Baylor might be the Rodney Dangerfield of the Big 12. I don't get no respect. I was wearing my Caddyshack hat earlier. I should have kept it on for this segment. I've got it right there, but... It would make me get up, and you might see my bald spot. I don't want to do that. But they are the Rodney Dangerfield of the Big 12. They're not getting the respect. And mainly, I'm looking at the Big 12 Weekly Awards. It was dropped Monday morning, and for the second straight week, someone not named Bryson Washington was named the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week. For the second straight week, it's an Arizona State Sun Devil. Got to say, I've been really surprised with Arizona State, as most of you have as well, have been as well. I did not think they were anything in this conference. And I thought kind of the same about Colorado and kind of about Baylor this year. And all three of those teams are churning out good seasons. Arizona State's one that could absolutely win this conference. But Jordan Tyson, their receiver, gets the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week. Has a pretty good game, don't get me wrong. It was a big win against Kansas State in Manhattan. Not a lot of people saw that coming, even some of the Arizona State truthers. But he caught 12 passes for 176 yards and a couple of touchdowns. That's a pretty good week. 176 is 176 and two touchdowns. That plays. That really plays. It just doesn't play as well as Bryson Washington did against West Virginia. And you could argue he should have won it last week or the last game they played when he had four touchdowns against TCU. He didn't get it. Well, how about this? 18 carries for 123 yards, seven yards a carry, three touchdowns on the ground, five receptions for 59 yards, and a touchdown through the air. 176 and two touchdowns is pretty good. 182 and four touchdowns is even better. So what is the deal? Why can't Bryson Washington sew up this award? He didn't even get the Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Week. They gave that to a Sun Devil, too. They gave it to Levitt, the quarterback. You've got to be kidding. What does Bryson Washington have to do to get some damn respect in this league? No, scrubby little Baylor, they're on their nice little win streak, but this this is, we got to honor the new teams in the Big 12. I mean, come on. Is that what we're doing? Are we just appealing to the new four corner schools? Because there's no reason that Bryce of Washington should not have won this award. I'm sorry. And maybe you make it a lifetime achievement because the last two games he's played, he has eight touchdowns. There is no one in this league who has had eight touchdowns in their last two games. And he didn't win player of the week for either of those weeks. What are we doing, Big 12? You trying to make the hateful eight more hateful? That's not in our blood. We're good Christians. We're not supposed to be doing that. But I've got some real beef with the Big 12. And then part of me is saying, you know what? Keep doubting. Keep doubting. Keep doubting us. These guys will just keep playing their butts off. Bryson Washington and Sawyer Robertson are all Big 12 players. They absolutely are. Since conference play started, it it is Sawyer and Shador right there. And I know we love R.J. Harvey at UCF, Bryson Washington. Last couple of weeks, he's been right there. Respect where it has been earned, where it is due. Bryson Washington, there's almost nothing more he could have done the last two games to earn Offensive Player of the Week. And you shut him out both times. There's something going on up there. Something going on in Irving the big 12 offices. I don't know. I don't know if it's because that McLean stadium worker made Brent Yormark show his credential. And he's just sent the message down to the people who make these kind of selections and said, Hey, 
No more Baylor. Nope. They got to earn that respect back. I don't know if that's it. Brent's, Brett, Brett's a friend. Okay. I'm not going to accuse him of anything like that. We did talk during that game, so he's a friend. But there's something up. I don't know how you don't give it to Bryson Washington. And the best part about all of it is I'll bet Bryson Washington doesn't even care because they went 2-0 and in those games. And that's what Bryson Washington cares about. And we'll take that. We'll take that. And maybe we'll see you in the Big 12 Championship, Arizona State. Crazier things might have happened, but Bryson Washington deserved this award. I'm going to let Jordan finish. But Bryson Washington had the best two-week stretch of all time or somewhere close to that. He should have been Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. And thank you for making the Locked On Podcast Network part of your daily routine. We have got you covered with the most Baylor Bears athletics coverage of any outlet that's not directly tied into Baylor University. So if you want more of that, be sure to like and subscribe. Ring that notification bell to get notified every time we're dropping a video here on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks and sick them.